Hey, hey, hey family, it is Evelyn here and I'm back with another video. And in this video, I wanna talk about four tips for self-care in the new year. So if you are new here, welcome. My name is Evelyn and I am a business and self-care strategist for creative women entrepreneurs and influencers. And so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about self-care, okay? Four tips for self-care in this new year. And I wanted to do this video because I will tell you that at the end of the year and so far at the beginning of this year, I've seen a lot of videos and Instagram posts and just social media posts and a lot of buzz around how people were just exhausted from last year, just, you know, running at a breakneck pace, just doing the things like having super successful years, but not having the enjoyment of that. But I want to give you four tips on how to prioritize self-care this year. Number one, and it's kind of redundant, is you have to make it a priority. A lot of times we think we're just going to throw self-care in there at some point or that we're going to wait until we're burnt out, until we're exhausted, until we're tired to implement self-care. And I can tell you, and you probably know from experience that if you wait to do that, it never happens. Or by the time it happens, you're so burnt out, you're so exhausted, you're you're so just done and spent and been burning the candles on both ends that you don't even really enjoy your self-care, right? And usually if we've been neglecting our self-care, we've also been neglecting our self-maintenance. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, if you're new here or if you missed that video, you want to watch the videos in this playlist um, about self-care because I have a video talking about the difference between self-care and self-maintenance. But what I see often is when you neglect your self-care and it's not a priority, a lot of times your self-maintenance starts to lack as well. And so you have to make it a priority. It needs to be a constant part of your to-do list. May not sound sexy, but it is effective to make it a priority. Okay, the second tip I have for you for your self-care is you have to plan it. You can't just fit it in. So it needs to be a part of your regular schedule. I personally have self-maintenance days and times and self-care days and times and things that I do on some frequency. Some things are weekly, some things are twice a week, some things are part of my daily routine, some things are a little less frequent, but those things are built into my personal editorial calendar. And if you miss that video, all of this, all of this is all of this is in the video series, but all of that is built into my personal editorial calendar to make sure that I never miss out on my self-care. Okay. The third thing is you have to prepare for self-care. There's nothing worse than wanting to check out, relax, unplug, detox, rest, and having a thousand tabs open in your brain and not being able to do that or not or, or starting to feel guilty about resting. Tell me if this has ever been you. You say, you know what, I'm going to take a day off. I'm going to rest. I'm not going to do anything today. And you spend more energy trying to force yourself not to work or be productive or be busy than you did actually relaxing. Am I the only one? Please don't leave me hanging. Let me know in the comments below if you've experienced this. I mean, I just remember trying to take a day every week of just, I'm just going to unplug. I'm going to do the things that I enjoy once a week. And it, it almost became a chore to me to be able to do that until I really had to do some work and learn about what I needed for self-care and how to undo that feeling of guilt or needing to be busy, needing to be nonstop all the time so that I could truly enjoy my time off, my time away. And then I find that a lot of entrepreneurs, creatives, influencers, women in particular, when we do start to have success, we feel like we got to keep going and keep going and keep going and do more and more and more. And then we feel like we got to give back more because now we're more successful. And so, and yes, it's important to give back and it's, it's important to uh, share your gifts with the people who need them. It is also important to replenish yourself so that you can give of what you have in excess without coming from an empty place, right? So that's tip number three is you have to prepare 
forward? What are the things you need to do to get ready to go into rest to what are the things you need to put in place in your business? I know I help my clients put a lot of systems in place, a lot of apps, a lot of tech tools in place, processes in place so that they can have that uninterrupted self-care without feeling like their business is going to suffer, without feeling like the rest of their life is going to suffer. But having those things in place that they're prepared when they need to take that time off, that time away, and they can do it on some frequency and they have a rhythm to their self-care. And then the fourth tip I have for you is you have to invest in self-care. Your health is an investment, not an expense. And you guys know that when I'm talking about self-care, I'm not just talking about like bubble baths and lighting a candle and listening to some music. While I think that can be great, that is not everybody's form of self-care and that's not all there is to it because how many times have you read a little article here, a blog post here, listen to a podcast here, watch the video here, and they told you, oh, just take a day off, watch a movie, binge watch a series on Netflix, order your favorite food, light a candle, order some flowers, and you should feel better. And you're like... I did that and I still I I I still don't. I still don't. It's not, no, it's not working. It's not working over here. Okay? So you have to invest in your self-care. One of the things I do when I teach people in my strategic self-care program um about have, how to have strategic self-care is you really have to learn how you tick and what you need and a lot of us and I know this was for me for a long time didn't know what I needed for self-care. I didn't know what I needed for self-maintenance. I didn't know how I was wired and then what the options were for the way that I was wired. I So I teach women how to do that. And then also, I I teach them how to remove the obstacles and the hurdles that get in the way and that undercurrent, I call it like a low grade fever of stress and anxiety. Like you're not stressed all the time and you're not anxious, but it's like this low grade fever of just a little bit of stress and a little bit of anxiety all the time. And so we work to get to the root of that and eliminate that out of the way because it's robbing you of enjoying your success. So anyway, those are my four tips for having more self-care this year. You have to make it a priority. You have to plan for it. You have to prepare for it and you have to invest in it. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.